Hello everyone, welcome to the Game Design Perspective. I'm Santi. I'm a senior game designer at IO Interactive. And if you're curious, I am actually currently working on James Bond on this really exciting project. And working with IO and with their technology, Glacier 2 is a very unique engine. I think it's one of the most interesting pieces of technology used currently in the video game industry. All this, and then all the bad news with Microsoft and Square Enix and the layoffs. It got me thinking about not talking about something sad this week, but instead celebrate video game developers. Let's celebrate those studios that teach us, all of us, how to make games in a positive, in a quality way, in a sustainable way. So that being said, I want to start celebrating in no specific order, but with number one, Vanillaware. The number one thing is that when you see a Vanillaware game, you know it's a Vanillaware game because no other game looks like a Vanillaware game. Their art style, their art direction is incredibly unique. But that's not all they give. Everybody talks about Vanillaware art style, but let's talk about how they dominate genres. You know, they make an action RPG and they make a strategy game and they make a beat em up and they make a visual novel and now they're reviving a style of strategy game that hasn't been done in a while, the Ogre Battle style, and they're doing it so successfully. They're always bringing a high level of quality with that art style, no matter the genre. Their stories are great, their direction is great, their mechanics are great. Their designers can design anything. It's pretty impressive. I think one day we're gonna see a first person shooter with sprites of Vanillaware, you know? Not just that. Making games with sprites based is really difficult. And I think they're the only ones advancing that type of technique nowadays. And while the studios, big studios and publishers are crying because they sold 5 million units, Vanillaware is celebrating 500,000. So they're not just incredible developers with the highest quality, they know how to scope their games. It's quite impressive to be honest even if their employees might be according to some accounts i've heard they might be a little bit overworked they might not be up there in like balance with the work uh, life balance they they haven't figured it out but they're trying but regardless of that it's time to celebrate that they are in scope they're a small studio and they are incredibly unique i think they're a jewel of japanese game development and we would all lose if they weren't here yoko taro thinks so as well my second one i th think they are very similar in a way. It's Supergiant games. The same way that Vanillaware can dominate genres, so is Supergiant. They make Pyre, which is a sports game, and then they make Transistor, which is like a new take on turn-based combat. And then they make, ba like, and then Bastion before that, that was an action RPG, but a very unique action RPG. And now we're seeing what they're doing with Hades and Hades 2. And another thing that I incredibly respect from Supergiant Games is the fact that they are doing early access right. It's hard. As a game designer, I can tell you that, I can tell you guys that listening to feedback can be significantly more difficult than, than people think. Because it's not just grabbing the feedback and implementing it. You have to interpret feedback. And the interpretation of feedback is a skill that is really, it takes years to master. And these guys, they make it look easy. They look at feedback and they know immediately what to do even though the feedback is saying something completely different they can go to the bottom of it and then let's not count that they're incredibly business savvy they are their own publisher which means they do their own marketing their own qa their own community management so they're not just a great developer they're like a great company fantastic company and let's talk about their art direction right same as vanilla where when you see a super giant games you know it's a super giant games you know it and it's all thanks to the art direction of gen c which was their concept artist but now she's the art director when you see a character from a super giant games you know it's from super giant it has such a unique style and it's so polished super giant games fantastic studio thanks for teaching us all of us Next is gonna be Remedy Entertainment. I think Remedy Entertainment is probably the oldest from the ones I'm gonna to talk today. Maybe, what an iconic studio. They're not that big, by the way. They're pretty small and they've stayed very sustainable. Remedy has never had layoffs, ever, since the PlayStation 2 era. And we all know Max Payne. Max Payne was a unique experience. They knew how to scope their game. They knew where to cut corners and they knew how to use that cut corners to make a better experience. I think Max Payne, if he had more money, might not have been a better game necessarily. And that tells you 
the quality of Remedy. And not just that, the fact that they're like, we're gonna make our own universe with Alan Wake and Control, amazing. And I know for a fact from people working at Remedy that it's just a great place to work. It's a very open place, very, very accommodating. They really figure out work-life balance there. Um, they have they have that uh, tour feeling, Remedy Studios. And they always bring utmost quality. They always bring a unique experience. You can grab any game from them and it's gonna be incredibly memorable. You'll never forget a Remedy game, never. You'll never forget. You might not like them, but you will never forget a Remedy game. And then going with the same trend with the auteur feel, we cannot talk about video game auteurs without talking about Kojima. And we cannot talk about Kojima without talking about Kojima Productions. You can think whatever you want about Hideo Kojima. You can think about whatever I want. But there is a fact here. He started Kojima Productions, the actual Kojima Productions, in December of 2015. And he released Dead Strand in November 2019. That is less than four years that he left Konami, opened a studio, started a team, and finished that full, long, AAA game with story, with a huge story, cinematics, and unique mechanics. And with quality, because it wasn't a buggy mess, it was quality, an open world in the span of, let's say, four years. I remember when Sony's executives were saying, I've never seen a game being developed this fast. And credit to the team. But the thing is that Kojima started that team from a small nucleus, which means they knew how what type of people to bring. And I know, again, for a fact that their team is incredibly international and incredibly technical and incredibly talented. Kojima trusts them. He has to. There's no way you can create these games without that. Development hell starts and ends in leadership. And the fact that Kojima has been incredibly ambitious, but not in a development hell, is because he has that skill. He knows how to delegate. The, he knows how to direct. Not everybody can. Surprisingly difficult. I've seen all spectrums of game directors. I've seen them. And the fact that he was able to achieve that much with Kojima Productions, and now he has like a weird portfolio that we do not know of, except like Death Stranding 2. Can't wait to see what he's doing. Sounds incredibly weird. That's Kojima. When you see a Kojima Productions game, you know it's a Kojima Productions game. When you see a Kojima game, nothing feels like it. From the menus, the moment you press start, you know it's a Kojima game. And, and the reason why I wanted to talk about it today is specifically for Death Stranding, not for Metal Gear. For Death Stranding, I didn't want to talk about Kojima alone. I want to talk about Kojima Productions. And Kojima Productions created Death Stranding in record time from nothing. And, and I mean nothing. They, they received help from Guerrilla Games and they received the engine, the Decima engine, right? It's still in six years, like there's Final Fantasy were developed in like more time and they had the team already established. How many games we've seen in development hell for years and Kojima comes and starts a company and makes a AAA game of quality in less than four years. That tells you that he's in scope and he knows how to scope his games because Death Stranding is incredibly well scoped. It's very focused. Its mechanics are very focused. You know, he never had something that was out of place because he was focused. He's like, we have money to make this. We're going to make this. And he knew how to pick the technology that would help him do that because he saw several engines. He didn't go with directly to Unreal, like a lot of indie developers. He had the chance to test other technology. And there's a lot of developers that can test technology and still go for Unreal. They didn't go for like the low hanging fruit of Unreal and they went and found an engine that was better suited for what they wanted. That tells you from the beginning that the scope of that game was planned. Oh, Kojima-san, And uh, finally, I want to talk about another one called Ninja Theory. We know Ninja Theory for Enslaved or Hellblade. And what they did with Hellblade was special. I wanted to talk about them because with everything that happened with Microsoft, I'm slightly scared about Ninja Theory. I'm not going to lie. And I think Antoniadis is no longer there. But the development process of Hellblade is an example for game developers. Out there. But not just about how to make a game, but how to communicate with your audience. And that's a thing that I haven't seen with a lot of studios. The level of communication that Ninja Theory had with Hellblade, delivering development diaries. Hey, this is how we're doing this. Hey, we're starting a motion capture in our studio with like blankets and, and GoPros, you know? The way they stretch technology, the way they modify technology in ways that even Unreal adopted. And, and all that was communicated month after month to gamers. It's completely opposite to what Ninja Theory is now, to be honest. But I want to celebrate that Ninja Theory. 
I want to celebrate the ninja theory that was making Hellblade. I want to celebrate the ninja theory that was communicating with people. Because I think it's the best example I've ever seen of a studio talking with its with their, their audience. And I haven't seen it again. We talk about this. One of the reasons why one of the problems that game development has is silence. Is a lack of communication between developer and gamer. And they broke it. They were completely honest. They were like completely open about this is how we are doing this. This is where the money is coming from. This is what we want to do. This is the references we're taking. This is the, our studio. This is our goals. I'm pretty sure every milestone that will make this video, this development diary, you got all can go and see that ninja theory. And that's the ninja theory I want to celebrate. The one that talked like nobody has ever talked. These are my five studios. So let's remember, let's let's go back. Vanillaware, Supergiant Games, Remedy Entertainment, Kojima Productions, and Ninja Theory. Original Hellblades Ninja. Let's celebrate those studios. Let's celebrate those studios that teach the rest of game developers how to make games sustainably how to not overblow a market and cause this kind of catastrophe that we're going through right now. There is possibilities in the gaming industry but we need to stop making all the same game, right? We need to attack those niches. We need to make different games, all of us. We need to stop trying to pull all demographics, all target markets into spray because we need to appeal to everyone. If you appeal to everyone, you appeal to no one. And these five studios teach us that. I'm Santi, this is the Game Design Perspective. Thank you for listening or watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you can. My brother and I were trying to grow this channel. We're trying to spread this type of message. We're trying to bring game development to you guys. So thank you for watching. Have a good one.